Welcome back to the Onyx Report, Black Masculinist News for the day. Hoping all is well with you. Like, share, subscribe, join, and donate. Support the channel if you will. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about a show that I was on, uh, I want to say back in November. Shout out to the Valerie Denise show. It's pretty much a phone call-in show, so I'm going to apologize in advance for the clips I'm going to play. The sound quality isn't the best, but I thought it was still worthy of uh, playing here for you. And this was a show. Now, I'm not going to I'm not playing the clips where I actually spoke. I really wanted to fixate on the clips from two other guests on the show uh, while I was there. And this is uh, Judge Joe Brown and uh, Professor Clonora Hudson Weems. And um, we had an interesting exchange. We were talking about the Black Panther movie, uh, the sequel. Uh, and we we got into talking about Till. And if you're not familiar with Till, Till is the uh, recent film made 2022 on uh, Emmett Till. But it's not so much on Emmett as much as it's about Mamie, his mother. Um, and, you know, uh, Mamie is a, a heroic figure in her own right. I, I take nothing from that. But Professor Clonora Hudson Weems wrote a book on Mamie Till and her life and a number of things. And she's quite informed about the matter, as well as being one of the foundational figures in womanism. And I'll talk about that after the clip. So check this out. And, um, See what she's talking about. Yes. You know, what, what they like to do is make black women stronger than strong, okay? Yeah, like stronger than strong. strong. You know, when I say strong, when I talk about the 18 characteristics of African women, one of them is str strong, strength. I'm not talking about physical prowess exclusively because something more important is the, uh, is the, uh, the ability to to withstand and to and to support and to be with the family and to train the children so that they can be the leaders of this new generation. This that type of strength. I'm talking about psychological, spiritual, yes. and more than just physical strength. But see, they want black women very strong, and that's what you got with uh, with the Emmett Till story. Mamie was a mother mm. for the loss of her only child, and yet she's just, she's stronger and strong. Excuse me. It's just Mr. Yeah, yeah. And he did it all. And he did it all, including going to the governor of the state of Illinois and forcing them to relinquish the body. And they sent it back to Chicago with the seal, do not open. And what did Moody say? Open that box. It could be dirt in it. Open the box. Mamie agreed. She said she didn't know. She was so distraught. They had to roll in in a wheelchair. She did not know. She couldn't even think. She said, I'm not a doggone politician. I didn't know the people. Moody knew. Moody was a strategist. But they took that from him, and he was the one that was helping her to arrange her speaking engagements. Yeah, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> That's not <laughs> Mr. Moody. But Mr. Moody is a man, so he ain't supposed to be strong. Man is supposed to be so strong. She's stronger than strong. I ain't interested in being that strong. I'm not flexing my muscles. Give me a break. I'm a female. I'm a woman. I met, I met Bill's mother. That's how I met you. We both what? That's were spit. Right. I had the first conference there. You were my speaker there at the uh, lunch. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you made me well. She was at my convention, yeah. she and her husband. Yeah, but when they with her, she was so strong, uh, it was ridiculous. All you got to do is read my book, and she'll tell you who Moody was. She'll tell you who she was. But they don't yeah. just tell you that. That's why they skip they, they my name. Make, that, see, it's mm -hmm. like this. That little bitty girl that was a new queen, she takes that miracle drug, and then one of the animals living up in the cave above the snow line in Africa, mm -hmm. type, uh, she sits there and arm wrestles him, and he said, oh, she's the Black Panther. Oh, give me a break. That's one of those white <laughs> in his pants. Fever dream ain't no how no when, like I said at the very beginning of my remarks this afternoon, for decades I had to look at a long line of women who thought they were stronger than they are, and they got jacked up, and they were in there trying to find some kind of relief from the situation they'd been put in. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. get over it. That's not real. Yeah, I know. So, and you know what? I wrote another... And, and then that yes, thing about crying, here is the king, and he's got an heir, a bastard, born out of wedlock, and I'm sorry, that's what the word means, and it's still legally binding on a yeah. situation. Right. Uh, he's a panther, and like you said, young brother, uh, glorifying somebody, a daddy out of wedlock. 
you know, and strong sister with no help. She raises the boy, and he's already right. too up. Where is his man training? What kind of damn king is he going to be? And he ain't had a man in him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And kept him yeah. out of his own it, it, kingdom. It's sad. How did he sad. become a king? Hey, you know damn. what, you guys? I got another, another poem. Book. It's called, I got another poem. The first one is I got, I, 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 I want my, the first song, the king. Hey, you know damn. what, you guys? I got another, another poem. Book. It's called, I got another poem. The first one is I got, I, 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 I want my, the first song was, I got your back boost. The second one that I wrote the last year is called, I want my boo back. Black women are going to keep pushing the black man and, I can do this all by myself. I well, you go right ahead. I'm not. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when they get through pushing them, and the white women are smart, they're just rolling in the black men, rolling them in. And when they get through rolling them in, and they realize that she's not saying the same thing behind closed doors, that she lets you think that you're in right by showing your strength. You know, I said, black women are going to realize they stay by themselves. Mm-hmm. All by themselves with no support. You know, one of my, uh, two of my very good friends, male friends, said, Clonora, if you were a male, those guys wouldn't have run away with the Emmett Till story because you were out there for a decade and a half by yourself on Emmett Till and nobody would touch it. If you had a man mm-hmm. right there with you, they wouldn't have done that. If you were a man yourself, that's the first thing, they wouldn't have done it because mm-hmm. a man would have jumped them. So, no, I'm a female. I don't fight men. And I'm not here trying to flex my muscles and show you how strong I am. And Mamie sure wasn't that strong. They had to roll in, on, in, a, in a wheelchair when they went to see the mm. at the uh, train station. They don't show that, do they? Now, she's mm. stronger than strong. This is ridiculous. Mm. I'm not Speaking interested not in physical showing, prowess and comfort you know? competing with black men on physical prowess. It's ridiculous. So you heard the clip. And if you couldn't hear it clearly, uh, uh, Professor Hudson Weems was talking about the portrayal of black women in film using uh, Mamie Till in the Till film as a starting off point. And, and she pointed out how they're, how black women are always presented as being stronger than strong, right? And she uses Mamie as an example by juxtaposing what the film tells us about Mamie Till and the reality. And what she talks about at several points is that Mamie was human. She was a human woman. She was vulnerable. She was in many ways, you know, just overwhelmed by what had happened. Her son was brutally killed, you know, and as opposed to how she's been talked about and how she was shown in the film, um, what H- Professor Hudson Wien tells us is that, no, she, there were times where she couldn't speak. She, she had to be wheeled in in a wheelchair. You know, she, you know, even the, the, the speeches she gave, um, you know, were not necessarily as they were presented in the film. She was presented as this stalwart, you know, invulnerable figure that stood up against all odds. But what Professor Hudson Weems tells us is it was actually, it actually had a lot more to do with her cousin. Her cousin's name was Rayfield Moody. He was born in 1907, lived to 1990. Um, you know, he traveled to Mississippi with Mamie and her father, uh, Nash John Carthen, uh, for the Million Bryant murder trial, you know, um, and through his contacts in the labor organizations, he helped arrange speaking engagements for Mamie before and after the trial. In many ways, he orchestrated the image that they credit Mamie for. He had a lot to do with orchestrating that. He gave her direction. He established for her what to say and how to go and how to go about it because she was, as any human being would be, devastated. Right? But even in the film and in casual conversation, because I've never heard Rayfield Moody brought up in any significant way. But according to Professor Hudson Weems, it was Moody that actually set the direction on how she should respond, even as far as deciding to have the box open. That was not something Mamie initiated. But in every story I've ever heard, it was Mamie that initiated that the box be open once it got in, um, you know, once they brought it in to Chicago and, you know, her, the remains of her son were shown. But apparently, uh, that's not actually how that occurred. It was it was Moody that made that decision and whatnot. So here we had a similar conversation when the film Harriet came out and we talked about, you know, some of the black men that were instrumental in, in the entire endeavor in terms of especially in terms of, you know, bringing in enslaved uh, black folk and, and bringing them up north. 
And as much that as that was credited to Harriet Tubman, there were there were narratives about other figures, particularly black men who, you know, undergirded Harry, Harriet Tubman, who def, who gave direction, who assisted, who, you know, who established, uh, you know, much more than they were given credit for. And we have the same kind of dynamic here. So these are black men whose names uh, are almost nearly lost to history. Right. In order for us to establish these heroic, uh, you know, uh, feminine heroes. And I'm not against having a feminine hero. I'm not against having woman heroes, but I am against, you know, the, the denial and downplaying of men's contributions, black men's contributions, you know, in order to establish those narratives. I do have a problem with that. So, you know, Professor Hudson Weems gives us some framework here to really begin to understand the impact of black men like Rayfield Moody, who had much more to do with the heroic narrative that's attributed to Mamie Till. Okay. So that's incredibly important. And she makes some interesting statements about that, but all of it is acceptable as long as it contributes to this idea of the strong black woman, which in many ways is a problematic idea because in, in some respects it dehumanizes women by presenting them as something other than they are. But when it's done in this way, it also in a, a very targeted way undermines and dismisses the contributions of black men that make it even possible for, for us to have this conversation. Because think about it. If if his if uh, Emmett Till's body was never brought back, would we be talking about him now? If the box was never open and his his remains put on display, would we even be talking about Emmett Till? And this is no disrespect to Emmett Till whatsoever, but it is to say there were hundreds of Emmett Tills. Hell, I talked about this last year when they found Till's body. They pulled seven other black black boys out of the same river looking for Emmett. So let's be real. Emmett would have been another nameless black male killed if we did not see his body on display in Jet Magazine. And apparently Moody had a lot to do with that dynamic. So shout out to Professor Hudson Weems for pointing that out. And I wanted to give some clarification as to why I'm referencing her. Because I think there's some misunderstanding about a few things. One, Clenora Hudson Weems uh, was born in 1945. She's an American author. She's authored quite a few books, uh, academic. And last I checked, she's a professor of English at the University of Missouri. Um, but a lot of people don't understand is back in the 1980s, she also coined the term Africana womanism. And she talked about this in the show. And I think on YouTube, there's a lot of misunderstanding because I think womanism is used synonymously with feminism. And I think they're used that way so people can get around the algorithm as, as it relates to feminism, but they're not the same thing. So when she talks about womanism, she talks about it in a very distinct way, right? Um, you know, and it, it, the casual speak is that when white women established feminism, it was in many ways uh, antagonistic to white men, right? Because the argument was about securing resources that white men had and, and securing the same kind of status and treatment. Whereas black men and women did not have the same narrative. We didn't have the same dynamic. Black men were not in a, a position to oppress black women. We were both in an oppressed state. So to assume the very posture of feminism in the black community was already problematic because we didn't share the same dynamic with black women that white men had with white women. So that was already a problem. But more particularly, more particular to Professor Hudson Weems's approach, you know, one of the things I'm going to read off, this is just this is just from Wikipedia. I'll put the link in there and I actually teach womanism more in depth, but I, you know, I don't really have time at the moment, but I'll say this, if you guys want to hear more about it, I'll, I'll be happy to explain. Um, and there's some key texts uh, to use. And of course, I would highly suggest you check out uh, Professor Hudson Weems books on the matter, but just to give some, just a little taste of it, right? Uh, womanism in and of itself used to, at the very least, differentiates itself from feminism to the extent that it identified feminism as a, as a construct that is designed out of a very particular Western white context and that black feminism in, in many respects parroted that same, that same uh, posture as white feminism. Whereas womanism sought to identify black women, not as distinct, you know, uh, individual agents, or, or when I say individual, I don't mean as individual people, I mean as women, like women as a distinct category separate from everything else, but to identify black women in the context of community. And why is that important? Basically what it means is instead of identifying women the same way you identify white women, you identify black women within the context of a community. 
and a community that has a history. So in other words, the very idea, the very notion that feminists are at odds with white men for control of resources. Whereas in the context of com community, we understand black women to come out of a situation where uh, their men were just as oppressed as they were and didn't have any status, power or control other than physicality. And yet we know even in the early 1980s, the rates of abuse actually were higher from women to men. And it wasn't just in self-defense. It was in terms of initiating violence. And there's still data to this day that shows that in some, in many contexts, women initiate violence more, they use weapons more, so on and so forth. So they're not these shrinking violence, the violets that just get beat up. And that, that's the popular narrative that feminists use to secure resources for women at the expense of men. But what we're talking about here in terms of womanism is an idea that positioned itself in contrast to white feminism and black feminism at many junctures to make the argument that women were not just these these separate you know beings that had no particular context that were fighting men for power that in many ways especially in regard to africana feminism these were black women that were in the context of the black community that understood they came out of I came out of a history where they were in the, and their men were just as oppressed as one another. And they thought about themselves in relation to their relationships with other black folk as mothers, as daughters, as sisters, as wives, girlfriends, so on and so forth. So woman wasn't this distinct category separate from all other things, except in terms of being portrayed as oppressed and in need of power that she needs to secure from men. It was really more looking at women in their relationships with the people around them, their relationships with community and understanding their historical narrative distinct from white women. So it was a very different kind of position in terms of what we started to see in the 80s and the 90s with womanists. I mean, when I was attending the National Council for Black Studies conferences in the 90s and the early 2000s, uh, womanists and feminists would go at it. And these women, womanists were not playing. So when I hear people casually using the word womanist today on YouTube, as if it's synonymous for feminism, that wasn't always the case. Now, to the extent that that might be accurate now, I can say that in the conferences I've attended, I haven't seen womanists as on fire as they used to be. I haven't seen them represented in the same kind of way or in any significant numbers. But I will say Professor Hudson Weems uh, still stands as an example. And I think what you heard in the video is, is a posture that's related to Africana womanism. She has no problem criticizing the feminist attempt to hyper-masculinize black women at the expense of black men's masculinity. She calls it out and she talks about her own vulnerability. She talks about her own willingness to work with men, to advocate for truth, and to accept protection because she understands that she's vulnerable. Just in what you heard, in the few minutes you heard from her, the very difference between uh, womanists and feminists should be apparent. And she wasn't alone. There were a collective of women like her that were op that were operating with similar with a similar kind of framework, right? But where it stands today is anyone's question. You know, I think clearly black feminism has been kind of approved of by the white established to establishment to a greater degree. And there's far more um, currency in identifying with feminism. If you're in the academy, if you're securing resources in terms of grants, if you're operating a nonprofit, if you're in any kind of organizational professional development, you know, dynamic, any of that, you're gonna get far more traction, you know, operating as a feminist, a black feminist in particular than you would as a womanist. And, and maybe YouTube is correct even in a backward kind of way that in some respects, some people's approach to womanism and feminism is synonymous, but it wasn't always that way. And I just wanted to clarify that real quick as far as that. But real quick, I wanted to also offer a word on uh, Rayfield Moody. Now in the film, Rayfield Moody is portrayed. Um, uh, let me find it. Here we go. It's portrayed by an actor named Kevin Carroll. Um, and he was played well, but even in the film, the African woman who directs this film does not position Moody in where he was historically. He's almost a side character. That's, that's an activist who kind of helps Mamie get tied into the activist, but he, at the end of the day, you know, really doesn't have any special status. He's not doing anything above and beyond. And when you actually listen to, to professor Hudson Weems talk about it. 
you can tell he actually has a whole different standing. And so one of the people I want to kind of look at is a sociologist by the name of Matt Nichter or Nichter. I don't know if I've mispronounced his name. Uh, and apparently uh, Matt is author of the book, Did Emmett Till Die in Vain? Organized Labor Says No, the United Packing House Workers and Civil Rights Unionism in the Mid-1950s. He's a professor of uh, sociology and coordinator of the Africa and African-American studies um, uh, departments at Rollins College. And he actually offers some tweets that I found interesting. He was the one that actually had, you know, one of the only pictures I could find of Rayfield Moody, um, who was um, active in various union engagements, um, presiding over some significantly so. Um, you know, so he wasn't just a you know a follower. He was actually an active participant in much of this. And so uh, Matt uh, uh, Nichter, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm probably butchering his name. He laid out in some tweets back in early 2022, some thoughts that I thought were, were pretty interesting. And I wanted to share them because he was one of the few that came up that actually openly talked about uh, Mr. Moody, right? And gave some, some context uh, to him. Um, so let me just read a little bit here because I'm gonna put him right here on the screen. He says, I'm referring to the suggestion by Michelle Obama and by, uh, by another um, uh, interviewee whose name I didn't catch that Emmett's mother simply had to reach out to her Democratic Party ward captain to get Mayor Daley to help her. There is zero evidence to support this claim. It also contradicts that Mamie, or to predict, oh, excuse me, it also contradicts what Mamie herself says in her memoir, namely that it was her cousin Rayfield Moody, who got the political wheels turning. Uh, Moody was a prominent labor activist going all the way back to the 1930s when he helped organize the steel industry in the Cal Calumet region. 1955, uh, Moody was the president of United Steelworkers Local 3911 at Reynolds Metal in McCook, Illinois, a delegate to the Cook County Industrial Union Council and an active member of the Chicago NAACP. In the film, Christopher Benson tried to, I think he's talking about another film, uh, yeah, he's talking about a documentary that he was uh, referring to and when some, where somewhere else, someone else portrayed um, Rayfield Moody uh, in, a, in a documentary. He said in the film, Christopher Benson tried to highlight Moody's crucial role, but the directors apparently preferred Obama's theory. Now, this is important because what he's saying is even though we're not talking about the same Till movie, he's talking about a documentary he watched. He calls it the Emmett Till documentary, Let the World See on Hulu. He said it was really good. But when it came to the portrayal of Rayfield Moody, they went with Obama's theory and kind of deep, you know, kind of uh, uh, downplayed the importance of Moody's contribution, even in the documentary. He says, I'm looking forward to episode two, which will hopefully tackle the wave of protests sparked by the murder and by the acquittal and by the acquittal of Milam and Bryant. So he gives us some information, but I think what's crucial is uh, Professor Nichter is doing something that others, uh, you know, have, have failed to do, which is to call out, uh, as Professor Hudson Weems did, the downplaying of a black man and looking at this, you know, more in a, as a pattern, the downplaying of black men who actually made decisions that were later credited to strong black women on film, right? And, and contributed to this kind of myth, mythification, this kind of mythologizing of this strong black woman idea, right? And he's and even though he may not be purposely doing this with this critique of this documentary, uh, by putting up Rayfield Moody and, and really calling out the misframing of his contributions, we see the same things happening in the film Till. And I would say the same thing has happened for decades. I've, I've, I've been teaching about Emmett Till for 25 years. I've yet to run into Rayfield Moody's name, let alone his true contributions until this discussion with Professor Mamie Till, I mean, Professor uh, Hudson Weems. So just to kind of put that in context, a lot more going on than what we're generally told, but I'd like to hear your thoughts and comments. So please make sure you contribute um, and let us know what you know and where we can find more information based on what you may have read and studied. Peace.